Hey there, David from Figma here. In this video, we're going to explore and practice using Smart Animate in Figma Design. Smart Animate is a powerful feature that detects layers with the same names across two or more frames and it automatically renders the differences like changes in size, position, rotation, or style. In this quick tutorial, we'll create three animations. One that scales a shape to show a sense of growth, one that shifts a shape's position to create a feeling of motion, and one that changes style properties like color and corner radius to visually suggest ideas like collaboration or togetherness. There's a community file linked in the video description so you can follow along. Feel free to pause the video at any time and work at your own pace. Let's go ahead and jump in. Once in the community file, head to the page titled one, intro to smart animate. Zoom in to see that there are some directions, which is well, this video. If you'd like a refresher on using frames in Figma design, please feel free to click on the link here. Pan to the right to see example one, which is the first animation we'll build in this video. You'll see a couple of terms such as trigger, animation, curve, and duration, which when we open up the animation features, can be seen in the graphic of this animations panel. But to understand this best, let's go ahead and build our first animation. Hover back to example one, go down to your design panel and grab a frame. Hold down shift to make a square. Go back to the design panel and grab an ellipse. Hold down shift and bring that to center. Click on the fill and let's make this the light green. Click on frame nine and hit control D. Click on the circle in the center, hold down shift option and scale that much larger. Click on the fill and make it a darker green. One thing you'll see in the layers panel is that frame 10 and frame nine both have ellipse two. In order for Smart Animate to work in Figma design, the layers will have to be named the same thing. Now that we have the design we want, let's switch to prototype mode. You'll see there's a flow right here, which when I click on, will open up a preview of the animation in the example. Let's go ahead and make our own. To create an animation, click on frame nine, click on this little plus button, by left clicking and dragging the animation noodle to frame 10. Here we have our animation panel. This is where we're gonna change things like trigger, animation, curve, and duration. For this one, we want the trigger to be on click. We want the destination, well, to go to the next frame, which you can see is frame 10. Instead of instant, change the animation to smart animate. Here, I'm going to set the curve to ease in and the duration to 300 milliseconds. Click on frame 10, hover over the left side of this frame, left click and drag the noodle to frame nine. And here we've created an animation loop. You'll see in the animations panel, it actually has saved the presets from the earlier animation I made. Let's exit out and go ahead and click flow to play. Look at that, we just made our first animation. One thing you can do is go back to design mode and change the color of anything within the frames. I can change this to be a blue and I can still see the animation happen in the preview by clicking. You'll also see when I have this animation preview up, it's going to show me what frame is current. Here I have frame nine, there I have frame 10. If I go back to prototype mode, I can left click over both of these animation noodles and I can change the animation curves if I'd like to. For this one, let's go ahead and ease in and out and back and see what that does. It has a fun little bounce to it. Congratulations, you just made your first animation in Figma design. Let's go to page two, making fun animations. Zoom on in so you can see example two. If you zoom in, you'll see we're actually gonna change our duration to make this animation last a little longer. If you're still in prototype mode, you'll see that there is a flow here. You can click the play button and click the animation to see that we're going to change the position. If your animation seems a little cut off, feel free to go to your settings and resize window to 100%. Let's go ahead and make this. Grab a frame and let's make this one a rectangle. Make sure you're in design mode. Go ahead and grab a rectangle and make it about this large and align it to center. And then I'm gonna round the corner radius to 100. Here, I'll go ahead and change that to be this light purple. If I wanna make this skinnier, I can hold down the option key while left clicking and dragging this to be a little bit more centered. Next, grab an ellipse, check the width of your rounded rectangle and make sure the dimension matches of this new ellipse. I'm gonna lock the aspect ratio and change to 52. From here, let's go ahead and drag this into my rounded rectangle and change this to be a darker purple. There we go. Let's hit Control D after selecting frame 11, and you'll see that I have frame 12. On this frame, click on the ellipse, hold down Shift, and drag it down here. Make sure that you have all the same layer names between frame 11 and frame 12. I can check that on my layers panel. Frame 11 has ellipse 2 and rectangle 5. Frame 12 has ellipse 2, rectangle 5. 
If your names are different than mine, that's okay, but make sure they're consistent between the two frames. Switch to prototype mode, connect frame 11 to frame 12. For this one, let's go ahead and ease out, change that to 800 milliseconds, and exit out here. Click on frame 12 and connect the animation noodle back to frame 11. Let's zoom out here and see how we did. When I click on the animation preview, you can see the animation happening right away. Feel free to play around with any animation settings to customize this and make the animation your own. If you hover over to example three, you'll see that I'm actually not clicking anything. This is because we're going to use the trigger after delay, as well as play around with multiple frames. This animation is trying to tell the story of togetherness and collaboration. Let's go ahead and build. Make sure you're in design mode and make a frame. Hold down shift to make this frame exactly 400 by 400. Zoom in and go ahead and grab a rectangle. Let's hold down shift and make this rectangle 180 by 180. Change this color to be that light yellow. Hit control D and let's make this second rectangle that orange and let's make the width 80. Awesome. And let's snap that down here. While this rectangle is selected, hit control D and bring it on up here. Let's change it to this red and rotate. Snap it over here, click and hold down the side of this rectangle to make it the width of the bottom two shapes combined. And bump this up a little bit, left click and drag over all the shapes and bring them to the center. In this frame, you should have three rectangles. Once you do, hit control D and left click and drag over all the rectangles and change the corner radius to 100. Very cool. Next, let's change the height to match the width. For this one, this will be 80 by 80. There we go. And for this one, I'm actually going to extend it out a little bit. Let's make this 120 by 120. Now I want this to be a little bit similar to what I have here. So let's go ahead and center this circle right here. Make sure this one is snapped to the left. And this one, oh, it's stuck behind. I can take this rectangle and in the layers panel, bring it to the top so that it appears above the other two. Next, let's change the colors. Let's change the fill of the larger one to be this blue. Let's change the fill of this red to be a light green and change the fill of this smaller rounded rectangle to be an even lighter green. Left click and drag, make sure those are centered and centered. And we're good to go. Even though the shapes look entirely different, they still have the same name. And because all you did was alter the rounded edge of each shape, it's going to make a cool animation. Now click on frame 14, hit control D and bring it over here. From here, I'm gonna left click and drag over all of my shapes. I'm gonna change the width to be 80 and I'm going to change the heights to be 80 as well. And there I have my squares. From here, I'm gonna kind of show community and togetherness like building blocks. I'm gonna bring these shapes and kind of snap them around like so. Awesome. Once you have your design, click on the first frame, hover over the right side of that frame and connect frame 14 to frame 15. Now what we're gonna do is the trigger is going to be set to an after delay, which is actually going to give us a delay option. Over here, we're gonna change the delays to be 300 and 900 milliseconds, depending on the frame we're animating. For this first frame, we're gonna change the animation delay to be 300 milliseconds. Click on frame 15, connect frame 15 to frame 16. Make sure the trigger is set to after delay, and this one we're going to change to 900 milliseconds. Keep the duration 300. Exit out, select frame 16, connect frame 16 back to frame 14. Trigger should be set to after delay, and this one, should be 300 milliseconds. You can always look at the options above to see if you have the settings right for the animation. If you aren't seeing a flow state, feel free to click on the first frame and add a flow starting point. There we go. Another thing you can do is click on the first frame and hold down shift space to view the preview. Now look at that. Now the durations of the after delay are set a little bit differently. That's because I wanna stay on this center frame a little bit longer than the other two. Feel free to click on the one above and see how your animation stacks up. One thing I might try on this animation I just made is going back to design, left clicking and playing with the rotation of the shapes to see how that affects the animation's entirety. Looking pretty cool, I'm very happy with this. Please feel free to edit the design, the animation properties and really customize this animation to be your own. And with that, let's finish it off with Animation Playground on page three. On the Animations Playground page, you'll see just a ton of animations that you can customize and make right below. You can always click on the animation in prototype view, click and drag and see all the animation settings. You can always preview the animation to see what you're going to be building. Exit out of there, left click and drag over the animation interaction properties and copy to your own animation. 
And that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning simple animations in Figma design. Have fun.